We're at Mount Dora today, exploring down here. I don't know. Some of the birds over here. Um, but we're just doing a little bit of shopping, exploring the boat dock. It's kind of foggy today, so you can't really see the water line, but it is just absolutely beautiful over here. And there's houses right here. What a deep it is. That's the street that we were on as we're doing some shopping. I'll try to get some of that. But we so are pretty. at um, a restaurant getting lunch. It's actually cool. We came, this is the street, we came down the stairs. And we are at the frog and monkey. Um, well, this was actually recommended by um, one of the shops that we were in. The woman said that this restaurant was very good. Baked brie. Mm. Ooh, flatbread pizza. Looks good. The cheese one looks good. There's just a glare in the sun, which is why I was trying to go like this. Yeah. Beautiful chandelier. Ooh, honey. I'll show you what we got in a minute. I just wanted to show you over here. They have a little um, station for kiddos, and you can color in a cupcake. And then they draw a winner each week for a free cupcake. How cute! The little bar. I want to show you the actual flavors. Not good at making it. I don't know. Anyways. It wasn't the best shot of the cupcakes because it's not focused. Me. But. What are the ones that we got, honey? This was the size of the donut, right? Uh, we got the peanut butter cream. It's chocolate cupcake. And the raspberry dream. And then dream. And the raspberry dream. Just that rhymes. Mm. Cream dream. Oh, man. Sleeve. We made it to the lighthouse. <laughs> it's little, so we couldn't find it at first. But up here, up over there, is where we were walking around. Um, that's like the little downtown shopping area, so we found it and the lake looks beautiful So pretty Cable looks like he's enjoying it <laughs> So peaceful So peaceful that they 
might encounter in their environment, we also want to see if they can identify different dolphins. So each dolphin has something unique to themselves called a signature whistle. Every single dolphin has this. It's almost theoretically like their name. What we want to do is present them with that signature whistle and see if they can match it to the corresponding dolphin, whether dolphin friends. So that's our goal with this research, but right now we are still working with these fish IDs. Now throughout this research, we do have to keep our eyes out for a few different things. Our dolphins can be a little bit tricky and use a few different biases. That looks like, no, that was Kyber, just kidding. So we can use a few different biases. Now one of these biases are location bias. So location bias would be if we always pick the one on the right, no matter what, or always pick the one on the left, just like if you were taking the test, you didn't know your answer, so you always pick C. Our dolphins can do that too. They can be a little bit tricky, so we have to keep our eyes open for that. Another bias that they might use would be something called an object bias. Object bias would be if you figure that stingray is He's going to pick that stingray every single time. Let's see how he does. And that is perfect. Big round of applause for Peter. All right, guys. I need everyone here. He's doing a huge favor. Anytime you hear his trainer blow on that whistle, I need you guys to cheer as loud as you can. How he can actually hear this cheer from right to the acrylic, and he finds it very reinforcing or super awesome. So anytime you hear that whistle, please cheer as loud as you can. That looks like he's choosing his answer.
Can I get a round of applause for Dad Buddy here? <laughs> welcome, welcome. So today we're going to be learning hand signals. So what Dad is doing right now, we're really going to use hand signals to communicate. So that's what we're going to be learning today as well. And also by learning about Dad right here too. Are you ready to start? Yes? So the first hand signal that we're going to learn today, please audience, please join us as well, is the OK signal. So why don't you go like this? Audience, can we do that too, the OK signal? So we're going to do the diver. Let's turn around and let's ask the diver he's OK. Here. Ready? One, two, three. Very good. Now let's come over here. We're going to drain our lock out chamber. And I want you to press this button right here. It's very hard, okay? Don't you jump come over here, then, buddy? So for up, have you ever seen something like this before? No, so you find it here at the seas. Let me tell you a bit more about this one. This one is 27 feet deep. You can see that as well. It holds 4,000 gallons of fresh water. That's a lot of water. What do you think, Dad, buddy? Now let me ask you this. What do you think we use lockout chambers for? What do you think we use something like this? What do you think they use for? Well, you can practice swimming so you know how to swim. Very good. That's a very good uh, very good guess. So this is maybe useful for the divers to they practice swimming. What happens with black air chambers like this one you find in submarines in the International Space Station is for divers to go from a dry environment like this one to a wet environment like the ocean, which I think that's pretty cool. And this one is 4,000 gallons of fresh water. On the other end upstairs, we have our main aquarium, which is 27 feet deep, but it holds 5.7 million gallons of salt water. That's a lot of water, don't you think? Have you been upstairs yet, buddy? Yes. Tell me, so you saw the ladies and sea turtles and the sharks, right? Now let me ask you this, what's your favorite aquatic animal? Sharks. Sharks. Audience, raise your hands if you like sharks. <laughs> so I encourage all of you to please go upstairs and look at the sharks. They're so cool. Looks like we are ready to go there, buddy. So right now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask the diver to go up. So what kind of hand signal do you think we're going to use for the diver to go up? So the heat signal that we're going to use is just thumbs up. So that probably does ask the diver thumbs up. Ready? One, two, three, thumbs up. Now the diver is going to go up, but he's about halfway. We're going to hold a fist like this, and he's just going to stop. Ready? One, two, three, stop. Now, so now we're going to do we're going to about the diver's equipment. Ready? So the most important equipment is going to be the air tank. This air tank is allowed the diver to be in the water for 60 to 90 minutes. We think that's so cool. Pretty cool, huh? You think it's cool? And we're going to get the next part that we're going to learn is the regulator. This regulator brings pressurized air to the diver's mouth so they can, so they can breathe. You think that's so cool that they do that. And the last part of the equipment that we're going to learn today is the buoyancy compensator, which allows the diver to go up and to go down. Also allows the diver to reach a state of neutral buoyancy, which means the diver could not move in either direction. This is very important for us because if you're starting for a reef, we don't want to step on those kinds of things. I think that's so cool. So you said your favorite animal was a shark, right? Yes, you like sea turtles too? Yes. So we are going to learn the hand signal for sea turtles. So I want audience please join us. Your front arm like this. I put the other arm on top. Put the other arm on top. And then put the other arm on top like this. Very good. Now I want you to wiggle your thumbs. Ready? One, two, three. Let's look at the diver in practice. 
you can ask if you're going to see a sea turtle. Oh no, apparently I've seen a sea turtle in the wild. Almost said this species or sea turtle are threat or in danger. There's many reasons why, but Dive Buddy, once you look at the diver, there's something there. Do you know what that is? What is that if you hold it? What's it look like? Do you agree with me that it looks like a plastic bag? Yeah, it looks like a plastic bag. What animal does it look like? It lives in the ocean. It can look like a turtle, yes. It can look like a turtle, but also it can look like a jellyfish. The sea turtles love jellyfish. It's because they eat that by mistake. So what are some things that we can do to help sea turtles in the wild? You don't throw the eggs in the water. And so we do that as well. Let me show you this. This is a reusable bag. It's very fashionable to use. So instead of using plastic bags, we can use this guy, buddy. Think this is a good idea? All right. Looks like he's having too much fun. So it's time to bring the diver down, right? So do you remember the hint signal for going up? What was the hint signal for going up? Do you remember? Going down. What is the same hint signal for going up? There you go. Let's look at the diver going like this. And the diver's going down, thanks to the points of compensating. You can see, we can ask him one more time if he's okay. Ready? One, two, three. And I just want to hear this ring the my time chamber, okay? Why don't you press this button? The first one is a raise your hand if you're a scuba certified. If you're a scuba certified, you can dive in and our five can set your name uh, down on a prayer. This prayer is called Five Quest. But don't worry if you are not scuba certified, there's another prayer that's allowed you to snorkel. It's scuba gear. There's prayers called Aqua Tours. And last prayer that we have here, if you have dolphins and dolphins research, we have our dolphins in that program. If you have any questions and would like to take a picture with a diver, please form me. A uh, line on the right hand side. There you go, which is we're almost done. Everybody, let's face forward and can I get a round of applause for our dive buddy? Thank you so much for joining us here this season with Eva and Friends. Have a great day of this memory here at Project.